5.03 p.m. on December 16th, 2021. So this afternoon's agenda relates to the Lynch re Redevelopment Project, beginning with a team introduction and schedule update presentation on, schedule update and a presentation on the Lynch proposed space program summary. We have one action item, which is consideration of approval of the Lynch proposed space program summary. And I'd just like to welcome TAPE architects Charlie Hay and Chris Blesson, and also Jay Nardone of the Educational Facilities and Planning Building, and Commi Building Committee. <laughs> um, and our working group is busily preparing the preliminary design program, the PDP, which will be submitted in January. And a key element of this is the space program, which lays out the proposed educational space uh, spaces and staff spaces in the new Lynch building and is the product of the TAP-A team's work with the district, the master plan, and the school committee goals. So school committee will need to provide input on this um, as one part of the process so that the design work can proceed. Uh, Mr. Nixon, did sure, you have anything make, um, to just add? Just a couple of comments. So yes. <clears throat> you've heard me say this many times before, but if design is problem solving, programming is problem seeking. So um, it, it, the program really just sort of lays out the building blocks of the school. So some may think first of all about, so how many classrooms of K through five? How many pre-K rooms? The school committee last looked at this kind of as a document back in August of 20. You may, some of us may remember during the eligibility period when we were making some initial requests of the MSBA. This followed a long back and forth with them where we looked at things like our enrollment history and housing data. And they, uh, at the end of eligibility, did come up with a design enrollment of, I think, 529 um, at a, a very granular level. But then we, of course, transitioned into the feasibility study. Um, and the ed plan, which Frank and others on the leadership team are working on, really informs that program that we're going to go back to the MSBA with and say, this is really what we want to use to build the building. So. I like to think of the eligibility period program almost like very, very conceptual stuff, and it's transitioning a little more to schematic. We're thinking a little more clearly about what this building wants to be. Um, Chris and Charlie will speak in their presentation tonight about things like the MSBA template. There are certain spaces they sort of assume going into it we're going to have in this school. And then there's some things that are really unique to Lynch, like the pre-K, for example, or our spectrum program, right, as part of the specialized learning center. So that'll be reflected in the document. The practice, long-standing practice of the school committee is to approve the, the, the space program since it really reflects, again, the building blocks of the school. Um, I probably won't be the only one to say this tonight, but it bears repeating, especially for any in the community that talk to us about this document, that what you're going to see tonight is what we're basically now going to ask the MSBA be included in the building. It will be included in the PDP submission, but that doesn't happen until January, I think it's 18th. Um, the MSBA could take three weeks, four weeks to review that and get back to us. So this doesn't necessarily mean that these spaces will be in the building. That, again, is part of the back and forth with the MSBA. Um, before Chris and Charlie started, we just wanted to throw up this slide. Some of these dates will be familiar to the school committee. There has been one change, however. Uh, Tape and Hill had a meeting with the MSBA, gosh, a week ago, I think, right? A week ago tomorrow looking at the dates that we had put forward and the MSBA felt strongly that we needed to pu uh, pull back the uh, PSR date, the preferred schematic, March 3rd. So we've actually lost, I think, was it a week and a half, Charlie, something like that. So the team still has all the work that they have to get done, but they have about a week and a half less to get it done. So um, other dates pretty much held firm March 30th for the facilities assessment. We still are planning on the board of directors meeting uh, April 27th, where they would actually vote on our prefer preferred schematic. Uh, and then of course we move forward, the goal still being to have the building open by the fall of uh, 25. So uh, the EFPBC is gonna have a meeting on January 10th. Uh, all of the meetings of the EFPBC are public, but like the one we had on November 16th, we really want to make an effort to invite people to come to this meeting. It will be virtual to see some of the early conceptual options that the design team has been working on. And I think everybody's really eager to see those. And in particular, we want to get the public feedback on those options. 
So uh, we'll just have to keep advertising that, uh, Dr. Hackett, through um, uh, Parent Square and others. But with that, maybe we could turn it over to uh, Charlie and Chris. Walk us through the program. Uh, you great. Switch so, back to Chris? so one of the things we've discovered over the years is you can't possibly show the space template on the screen and be able to see it because it's too long and all the it's impossible to read. So we've brought hard copies for you to, to share with you. What we're going to show on the screen is portions of this, uh, and we'll move down the categories as we go. Um, That's great because my hard copy was very <laughs> small. <laughs> I was just going to, uh, I hope we have enough here. Thank you. Well, I do have it on. But as Chris said, this is the um, Thank you. MSBA standard template modified. Thank you. And it is modified um, <clears throat> for every project. It is a kind of a roadmap uh, in terms of size of spaces uh, as we go. So, and as Chris said very clearly, this um, is what goes to the MSBA in the PDP submission. It may be modified based on um, what the MSBA says to us about allowable space. And they have the, they, they generally can if they wish push back on requests. So where we don't comply with their standards, they can say, well, we're not comfortable with that, and if we're going to fund it, we get an opinion here. Furthermore, it is a living document, and it will probably be modified over time just in the course of developing the design. So this is a very preliminary version of this. However, it is likely that it will end up somewhere in the range that you're seeing now. Uh, when, when I say things get modified during design, it isn't great sweeping modifications. It's simply we need three offices, not two. And we learned tonight we need a cookie table. So there are things <laughs> that, 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 though, Charlie. That, that will happen during the process that, that uh, will probably move it around a little bit. But the, the really, the rubber hits the road in the first category, right? Core academic spaces. This is where, you know, and this is what the MSBA is most interested in. And actually, it is the area where the MSBA tends to be the most sympathetic about overages, because from their point of view, the place they should be putting tax dollar money is into educational spaces. So I think we can all agree to that kind of perspective. When you see over in the far right uh, column, and this is a rolled up version of the space temple. It's a space, space temple actually has more columns than this, believe it or not. <laughs> and it's even smaller font. Um, but the, uh, the guidelines are on the right, and that tells you what their guidance is. And this, this template um, is, is modified for every single project because it's based on a enrollment uh, which you have. And so the bigger the school, the more spaces, the smaller the school, the less spaces, right? Um, but they're silent on pre-K. In other words, they do not give you a, an approved number for pre-K. They give you a, an approved number for um, uh, kindergarten in theory, and they give you an approved number for number of core classrooms in theory. However, um, their, uh, the, the way their calculus works, for instance, with core classrooms, um, they readily acknowledge that when they spit out 19 rooms, that's not super helpful to you if you want to have equal number of, um, of classrooms per grade, right? So if you're a four-section school, if you're a five-section school, you don't want 19 classrooms, you want 20, or you want 24, or, you know. Um, and then the uh, uh, other interesting one is the, what, the, what they call STE, which is their Science and Technology Education Piece for, um, for elementary schools. And they presume that you are going to want some kind of science component at the older grades. And what, uh, what this often translates into at the elementary level isn't dedicated science lab, it's dedicated STEM education spaces that can be deployed across the, across the school, which is what we're proposing to do here. So, in this category, uh, after a lot of discussions with the sort of stuff, you know, the, with, with Dr. Hackett and the kind of subcommittee, we're proposing seven uh, pre-K classrooms, which is, I think, generally what you are really running now. 
And apparently there was some discussion with the MSBA about six previously, but seven sounds like where we want to be in terms of the expectation for the district if you're going to have the entire pre-K program over at the Lynch. And, you know, uh, it, it is, it's a program that, that you obviously embrace, and uh, we want to accommodate for that. Uh, there was also a decision made that we should have five kindergarten classrooms, five grade one classrooms, and five grade two classrooms. So we then go at grade three, four, and five to four sections. Uh, because we have a slightly larger population per classroom. And hopefully, if my math is right, and we add all that up, we come to 22 plus 5. Um, we also are proposing, um, so, so, so the, in other words, the, the uh, uh, K and 1 and 2, uh, we want to be a little bit below 20. And uh, three, four, five are going to be a little bit above 20 for this for this population in terms of students and seats in classrooms. Um, we are proposing one STE room across the school. This sounds like district wide. This is generally the, the configuration to have a steam STEM makerspace type space within the school that's shared. So that's what we're proposing here. And that gets us our um, first category, which is core academic spaces. And as you can see, we're, 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 they have a, of course, the MSBA wants to <laughs> monitor this. They have a, they have, what's the delta between us and you? And it's quite high. But that, the fact of the matter is, they don't carry any STE in their, in their, in their, you know, kind of base model. And they don't carry any pre-K in their base model. So, They'll be sympathetic. We don't expect a lot of pushback on pre-K. The reality is, as long as you can justify the request, which you can't, because how many students you have, you should be fine. Um, and uh, and we, I don't, we have not in the past had a lot of pushback relative to elementary, uh, you know, kind of balancing out elementary school classrooms so they make sense in terms of having equal sections across the grade levels. And they usually were basing the, the capacity, the, the number of classrooms on your, your school committee guidance around number of students per classroom. So we hope that that all makes sense to them. So that's where we are with that. Special education, we are just we're basically there. We're slightly below it. Um, we're proposing um, a total of, of four, um, Four classrooms that are essentially called self-contained, you know, whatever, you know, every, every, that's what the MSBA's language is. Um, and that would be three, um, three here um, that would be uh, larger, and then a, a resource room. So this is okay. So what we did here is we have your spe spectrum program presumes um, three classrooms. And then what we did is we put in a kind of a, a, another classroom that we're presuming may end up in, uh, associated with the pre-K program. And its exact configuration and character needs to be developed. But the intent is to have available space for potentially OTPT movement, uh, sensory, these kind of programs. And how, how that work. So this is a placeholder for to be developed future uh, kind of configuration. We also, they, um, they uh, in their space template carries um, three sort of all over half size classrooms as resource rooms and then one small group room. We've, we've modified that to be three of each um, in order to get uh, essentially the same square footage, but it gives us six classrooms instead of four. And we've made them a little bit smaller than their guidance. And you're a push-in district. You're not going to have a lot of pull-out, quote unquote. But you are going to want small group uh, um, instruction. You're going to want quiet places for testing. You're going to want one-on-one -on -one instruction. It is inevitable that you want some small group spaces. And in fact, two nights ago, I was in a, in a district where the superintendent was just pulling her hair out. She said, none of our schools were designed 
um, for this kind of instruction. So I got less classrooms. What I don't have is any small spaces, and I'm desperate for them, you know? So I think you'll be happy to have these small spaces, even though you're not literally pulling kids out. Um, but you'll, you'll deploy them. So it's a good thing. It's a way of, it's a way of um, using what's given to us in the space template. Art and music, we have one. Um, we have one. We have two. But we changed that. The intent was to have one um, art classroom. Um, we are showing two. I think we'll modify it to one. I think maybe I modified it. Um, and uh, one music classroom, and that will, uh, and that's consistent with their guidance. Um, the thought was one art classroom is adequate. That's what you have in your other schools. So that's what we're expecting here. So that's as far as that's that group. Um, and then uh, slightly over on the gym because the intent here was to have a full size gym that could be um, used for. That could have a full, you know, high school size court. But we also want to have a little bit of seating for parents, for a place to throw your backpack. So it's not a lot, but we're hoping we can get 20 or 30, you know, seats on bleachers. And if that's true, we think we'll be a little bit over the um, the 6,000 square feet that they give us as guidance. But we want to keep the storeroom. We want to keep the health instructor's office. We think it's unlikely it will have a shower, but that's what they say. Um, and then we right now have a media center at, at 3,000 square feet. That means, so one of the things, and Chris is going to show some images of some of our projects, um, that media center might, that's fungible, some of that might come out into the rest of the school, depending on the ultimate design. We've done these visioning sessions, they've been uh, great, and uh, you know we've certainly heard about an interest in having uh, flexible educational spaces that aren't traditional four wall spaces. Um, and if that's true, we need to borrow square footage from elsewhere to make that happen. One of the places is often media centers. Some of the media center may become space in a hallway. It could become grade level um, kind of library space. It could become project space out in hallways. But the fact is, this is what we have to work with. So for the time being, we're staying with. Um, with the MSBA's guidance there. We're staying with the MSBA's guidance on cafeteria. This shows one seating. It may be, excuse me, it shows two seatings. Um, I'm presuming, Frank, that that's how we're going to present that to the MSBA so it's consistent with the space template. Um, what I think the, the problem is if we say we have more seatings, in theory, we're supposed to reduce the square footage, you probably prefer to have as much. Most, most schools want to have as much cafeteria as they can get because they use it for multi-purpose space, yeah. et cetera. Um, <clears throat> the, um, one of the interesting discussions we will have will be around a stage that they carry that we have, so a platform. Isn't really a stage, it's really a platform. Uh, where that goes will be a discussion. Um, a lot of elementary schools end up putting it in the gym. And the reason they do that is so that they have a place for presentations and performances that are all school, all school assemblies. You can to do that in your calf. You can do that in your gym. Uh, interestingly, we just opened a school where the um, platform is between the gym and the cafeteria, so you actually can deploy it from both sides. There are acoustic issues there. There are other issues there. That may not be what we do here. However, if that's a possibility, but we'll make that decision as we move forward. It's not really germane yet to, to the discussion. We're not that far along, but it will become a discussion at some point. Uh, but we do want that platform. You will want that platform. I know, you know, at, at Ambrose or, or Bio, you have it in the gym and use it, and it's apparently very effective there. Um, and uh, we will, we're keeping the kitchen size for now. We'll have the kitchen designer get involved in that when we get a little farther along. Medical, the change here that does raise us above 160 above uh, MSBA guidance is the need for a dedicated and specific pre-K nurse's office, which apparently is key here. So we're adding that in. We're hoping the MSBA will understand that this is supporting a pre-K program. Um, and then, uh, w one thing, did, we, did I, I didn't talk about um, student, uh, teacher planning. 
One thing I failed to talk about, but we think is important, is this. This is a request that is, doesn't exist in the MSBA's world, although they do have a single room down below. But we think it's important that we have teacher planning spaces so for because those become common planning for common planning time, teacher meeting. They become print room. They become a copy center for the floor. They become an important, they, you know, we'll put in a small area for a coffee, you know, microwave oven and a coffee maker. We think those are pretty key. They, you know, we want these schools to have a collaborative environment professionally. We want the kids to see the teachers modeling collaboration. That makes a whole lot of sense. Um, the MSBA doesn't usually push back on that. Um, you will also note the magic number three here, <laughs> which is a bit of a tell. Um, the, the working presumption right now in terms of planning is that we may, we may, but we may end up with a three-story school. And if we do, we want some of these spaces distributed on three floors. If we end up with two floors, one of those can probably come out of the template, makes the MSBA happy, reduces our square footage a little, is not a bad thing. They never have a problem taking things out. They have a bigger problem putting things in. So we're going with three on the presumption that's the worst case, although at one point I said we may end up with a 10-story school to fit it on the site, but nobody thought that was a good idea. Or funny. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then uh, we get down to administration and guidance. They are pretty, um, they have very little interest in giving you extra square footage in that category. So we don't dare ask. The one thing I will say is we do think we need uh, a pre-K a, a pre administrator and waiting area. They need their own office. So the presumption is that's going to be in there. But some, we'll, we'll, we'll make that work. We're going to have to massage this category. But hopefully, uh, by the time we're done, we will have provided adequate offices and the like. And it, you know that, that's, that'll come. That'll be, that's one of those things that's going to move, right? When I said this is a living document, we, we may not have the right amount of offices. We may not have them titled correctly. Custodial and maintenance, back of house. Uh, and then um, that's really the whole thing. So we are right around 104,000 square feet. They tell us we ought to be at 80. But remember, they don't add a lot of these uh, rooms into their kind of guidance. So, so their actual should be higher than what it shows. But as they, they typically, <laughs> this, is, this is how they do it. Um, and that is kind of our program. And if we back out that one art room, Charlie, we're down to 103, 140. And we just saved a bunch of money. So we're off yeah. to a good start. There you go. <laughs> um, so that's it. So Chris was going to go through some spaces, right? Just sort of yeah. illustrate what some of these may, what may happen with some of these. Um, so these are uh, a few images from Taipei's portfolio, but they, I think, represent a lot of what we saw in the visioning sessions and what might come out of this space summary. Um, and so. This first one is uh, in an elementary school, and you can see the steam room off to the end there. And this building had one of those. That's the kind of idea around the STE that we talked about earlier. And um, we actually positioned some seating and flexible space outside of it, and those walls could open up uh, fully, as you see them in the picture, to allow for the space to kind of breathe out a little bit and sort of be a little bit more flexible. If you need more space to run something, you can or just open it up um, so that acoustically, um, it, and it's also outside of the, the sort of, no classrooms adjacent to it. So if there's something a little noisier happening there, it's, it's gonna be okay educationally. Um, and in the center of the building. So um, little idea there. And then this is kind of the inside of one of those spaces that we've done recently that kind of, um, you know, we got some feedback in some of the visioning sessions that bright colors like this might not be appropriate, but. Um, maybe some places you want to emphasize some bright colors to energize the space or something like that. Um, but just kind of giving some examples of, um, you know, the STE kind of um, room because that is the question mark, I guess, on that. We kind of know typical classrooms look like classrooms. Uh, I'll show you a picture of those in case you've forgotten what those look like. But um, the, the idea around media that Charlie was talking about earlier, so. Uh, this is a concept of taking a, a little bit of that media space because you might not need a 3,000 square foot media room 
that's a destination off of some end of the building that might be better utilized around classrooms. And so this is a concept, just new school, open elementary school, and you can see the classrooms are all around this space, but it's a breakout zone the kids can come in and out of, and it's right adjacent to the rooms with um, transparency to it. So a teacher could decide to send two or three students out there to collaborate and still have eyes on both situations. Um, and so the, the idea there is that it creates a flexible learning environment. I mean, you know, all the talking around education these days is kind of giving kids um, some agency and agility in their education so that not every learning environment is the same. Not every student learns the same. Um, and so we can kind of give some breakout areas and, and engage kids a little differently. Those little stools there, this is part of the FFE process, but um, kids fidget and wobble, and so you might give them a stool that lets them fidget or wobble while they're doing their learning, and that's not um, bad. So um, this is one of those, this is the space Charlie was just talking about with the, the platform between the gym and the cafeteria. The gym is beyond, the cafeteria is the foreground, as you can see, um, and there's a big wall here that stacks up and can close off the, the stage or the platform so that um, it's acoustically separate. It can actually probably function as a classroom to some degree, not, not you know, you probably wouldn't host a real loud band music in the classroom in there. At the same time, you're hosting lunch because it could have some acoustic bleed-o. Um, but during the day, it's just fine. And, and it actually works pretty well because you can have a smaller, kind of more intimate gathering with the stage on the cafeteria side, but the bigger side of the stage, like at the gym, can host a much larger crowd uh, and still have the, the stage there for uh, performances and things like that. Um, this is a, a concept of, um, similar to the media center deploying out, um, this is a specific um, image displaying extended learning zone. Um, so that, that came up a couple times in the visioning, and I think you see it in the education program um, talked about. And what this really means is that you know we, we scheduled about 900 square feet in the space summary for classrooms, but maybe not all 900 square feet of that is within the four walls of the traditional classroom, and we can give a little bit more breathing space to allow the building to do things for us. And so, um, Corridors, there, there's at the bottom of that uh, space summary, you see there's a multiplier of 1.5 that brings the building up to the full 103,000 square feet that um, is connected to um, And a lot of that 1.5 is corridors that remain relatively unused all day long. So this is kind of an extended learning zone that recaptures some of that and turns it into learning space for different kinds of functions, um, different breakouts things like that. You can see this school actually had technology in those spaces so that students could break out and have access to technology whiteboard seating and um, group activities. Um, and this is a pretty traditional classroom, but the emphasis here is on um, access to natural light and the views and the uh, sort of um, nature that's around. We've heard, I mean, if we've heard it once, we've heard it a million times on this project that the connection to this natural site is so important. And you will see us deploy um, nice big windows that are you know, energy efficient, but also give that connection to the outdoors because it's really critical and we have such a beautiful site to work with that we want to make sure we have that. So um, that's really what we had. Um, and also those portable TVs are pretty neat. So TVs What's that, Charlie? TVs on wheels. Mm -hmm. So, so the technology will be a whole conversation that we have when we program that, but you can, this is one way to do it that you're seeing in this room right now where it's an uh, interactive projector to pre projectors on a wall. So a lot of schools are going to these interactive TVs that are actually on wheels and you can move those around. All you need to do is plug it into some power that's also all around the room and it just will pick up the ubiquitous kind of uh, uh, Wi-Fi signals and then the teacher it might be good to put one of those in my office just so we have a sense for um, whether it's the solution we'd want to go with. It's right. a pilot. It's a, it's it would pilot. be a pilot, pilot program in my office. Yeah. So just, I mean, you volunteer for that? 
I would volunteer for that. Okay. I would. Always taking one for the team. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and when the time comes, if, if that's not enough of a demonstration, we do set up a demonstration <laughs> and tell people to, uh, to bring their whatever device and show it how it interacts. And by the way, we did stick with 950 in the classrooms with the idea that we could go down to 900. So that. I Charlie, is that it. kind of technology to replace smart boards? Yeah. So, so right. So, digital kind of digital um, kind of um, screens have sort of, in a lot of, of have kind of, you know, kind of displaced smart boards. And now, what a lot of teachers are saying is, well, why don't you give me that digital display that I can move around the room? So, if I have a small, I'm working with six kids over here. I'm going to wheel the thing over here and work with them, and or vice versa. I'm going to work with six kids individually while everyone else watches a video. I'm going to ask you to grab, grab your mic just oh, so they sorry. can hear you better at home. Go ahead. I think I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> you, still put, you still put plenty of whiteboards in the room because yeah. you right. still need to do that. But, right. um, but like the, the interface with technology is sort of, we've seen, I mean, even the last two years, this real speed pickup for going to screens like the Prometheans or touch screens that can do technology in an interactive way like that and just capture it in. Um, and you're building now, now because of the pandemic, we're building like webcams into that system and stuff like that. So it's like just a big device that I think is starting to encompass where education is going. But it, it doesn't have to, right? There's other solutions that we'll go over with you. It's just about getting the infrastructure right. Um, and that's the whole technology programming thing, which is sort of. It used to be like cost prohibitive and it wasn't as functional, yeah. but I mean, right. it is they yeah. pretty much e even now in terms of like a smart board or projection system with the TV or is it? Is yeah. I mean, we just outfitted that whole school with those and it fit within the budget that the SBA gives us. That's I think good. they might have spent a little, maybe a little bit more, but not, yep. it wasn't you know, yep. wild. Yep. So. Uh, well, any questions? Mr. Nixon. Just make a couple of observations, <clears throat> and it just goes down to those bottom line numbers. So even pulling out that art room, we're at 103 and change. So I want to remind the committee, the master plan, we were just under 92,000 square feet. But of course, the master plan doesn't really reflect a detailed programming exercise. And the concept at the time, and we've, we've really had to go back and look at the history on pre-K. When we first drafted, Ms. Bergstrom may remember this, when we were working on the master plan, first drafting our initial SOI, we had five pre-K rooms. And sometime in the 17 to 18 school year, it may well have happened in the summer of 17, we went to six pre-K rooms. And it didn't really dawn on me when Dr. Evans moved two of them to VO, and we knew there were two at VO, it, I should have thought, oh, we have four at Lynch, two plus four is six. Where did that one come from? Um, so we have certainly expressed to the community a desire to expand the pre-K program. We acknowledge there's, al there's always a waiting list. So today we're running the four downstairs plus a two at VO, four plus two is six. This accommodates seven classrooms. So that's one accounting for some of that growth. And the other is that the MSBA at the end of eligibility kind of said a couple of things. They offered us a four section building, so K through five, so six sections times four, 24 classrooms. But the MSBAs, and, and Chris and Charlie can speak to this better than I can, the MSBAs class size guidelines don't match up exactly with what we have in Winchester. When we think of 18 through 20 for K2 and 20 to 22 for grades three through five, they have some different ideas about how many kids should be in a classroom. But coupled with that, they have some ideas about how big those classrooms should be. So the classrooms, for instance, at the Lynch we have today, most of the classrooms are about 865 square feet. What pushes the average size up are things like the old wood shop and metal shop back when it was a junior high, because those have been converted into classrooms. So if you add up all the square footage and you divide, you get closer to 1,000 square feet. But the majority of rooms really are much smaller. So we're adding three additional core classrooms, K through two. We're picking up a pre-K, and those are not small. This idea of you know that kind of small administrative suite for pre-K is really important. So this is like a home base, right, for Sarah Casey and her staff, and she needs to have a place to be. 
and, and really a philosophy about this lynch being so much bigger than it is and with um, a number of those kids having some special needs it really makes sense to have a spot for nursing as well in the this is a considerably larger building which we keep needing i think to remind the community kind of accounts for that but at the end of the day this is a program that's nominally about 12,000 square feet bigger so i would encourage you all to think about that's about six million bucks and so certainly there's real interest in meeting all the needs of the community but space comes with a cost so i just wanted to to put that out there to the committee to sort of understand some of the consequences for it and then having said that i just wanted to ask a puffball question of tap a for for the many line items in here that are not in red some of the standard msba space template items whether it's storage receiving guidance media center etc do you feel in your experience that that the msba template really works well in terms of meeting the needs of districts and do you feel like the, those nets that are in here from the msba would be really appropriate for the lynch project <laughs> Well, it was intended as a pop ball question. <laughs> it's not as yeah. loaded. <laughs> no. Uh, no, I think they, I think they do. Um, the, 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 yeah, they do. And I think the ultimate, like we've said before, if you look at the, um, like, this category. Yeah. That's really in equalizing to zero to the MSBAs. What's in here, um, we oftentimes will adjust. But the MSBA's categories, I would say, usually offer you the, the right, that's the puffball answer, is that the category offers you the right amount of space to deal with. What's down here, we a lot of times will kind of monkey with to make sure it's right for the district because one, you know, one district might not think 150 square feet for an office, like that's too much and we can go with 100, 120, and we can deploy that to a, some other thing. If you take out 20 square feet times six offices, you've all of a sudden got another office. Right. Without increasing what the MSBA is giving. And another, and the MSBA is typically okay with that. So, yeah. so long yeah. as the categories correct. Sort of track. And uh, yeah. the gym tends to be a challenging one because we don't think we've ever done a gym that's hit their number, and they they have to know this, but they stand by their allowance. So, we always request at least a little bit more there. Mm -hmm. Thank you. As in, you're always over building gymnasiums. Hmm. It never hits their number. You're always building larger gymnasiums. Yes, than, okay. districts always request because the size of court that this produces for six thousand is basically has no seating for anybody. Right. So, it, it, so you either make a, an adjustment in the court size and you can't hold tournaments and other kinds of things in this gym, or you kind of have to increase it a little bit to get some seating and, and keep the court size the same. So, and the seating is also helpful instructionally for teachers, of right? So, yeah, I mean, the gym is technically supposed to be like two teaching stations, typically. So. Miss, <laughs> Mr. Brady, thank you for all of this. This is really helpful. I, I guess I just had a, a few thoughts, and they might not be things that are applicable or where we have opportunities or flexibility but I did just want to throw them out there um, I I think Chris made a great point about the pre-k um, you know we were at five then we were at six so go to seven just just wondering more long term you know could we could we aim for eight I don't know if that's just a total non-starter how much can you push? Just thinking long term, thinking about everything we hear from the federal government about preschool and well, right. There's the possibility of a mandate, right? Someday we don't know. Right. It exactly. all hangs on a senator. Yeah, a single senator oh, for now. But uh, <laughs> just again, thinking more so, long term. So you, the district, will have to justify your requests. Okay. And that you know, they will say to you, "Give us your FTEs. Show us you have in your employ." enough people to staff these rooms and if you sort of say well geez gosh not really they're going to say well then why are we going to have you build an empty room right yep. show us that you have the population to justify the request so so that's where the rubber hits the road right you you know a, a kind of a, a a request without support it's not going to go anywhere with them and they're pretty adamant about it so i think any kind of request you do make you have to think through whether you truly can justify it 
So I think the request for seven to me is a little bit of, is going to be on their list of things that they may see as a stretch. How come we, you are running six, but you're asking for seven? So then asking for eight might be even more of a stretch. I think I, I definitely hear that. I just think to Chris's point, you know, there there is generally a waiting list, and and I think from personal experience, there's people who don't even apply because they know right. that it is already. Yeah. And if you take the the actual number of preschool age children who attend preschool going to private preschools both in and out of Winchester, I mean, it would be well beyond eight classrooms worth if they all wanted to come and, and do it. Well, I so. do think that's going to be important data, right? When they push back, you're going to want to say, here's our waiting, here's been our waiting list year over year, this many yep. students. Um, this is the many students that we have evidence are going elsewhere. Those are the kind of, uh, those are the kind of supporting documents that will, that will support your We've request. actually already talked about that because we are asking for the one additional over the right. initial. Um, right. right. And Seamus, I know you had another question, but I, if I could just quickly yeah, interject please. a thought. Uh, this, I, my impression is it was not the case back when we did VO, which was now 12, 13 years ago. But, but I understand today the MSBA <laughs> is more uh, sort of formally interested in things like expansion opportunity. They want to know that your design is thinking about the potential for expansion. So at VO, we internally recognized an opportunity building into the hill so that we built in some shell space at the lower level, which we then, within two years, we fit up. And that's actually why we were able to move the pre-K spaces in. And even today, we have the ability to build out that double-loaded corridor on the third floor. I think Mr. Brady's point's a good one because whether it's pre-K or if it's pre-K through five, if we should find that we need additional space, and this isn't really a programming issue so much as it's a design issue, it's really incumbent on all of us on the project team to be thoughtful about how Lynch can expand so that whether it's through Build Back Better or it's through simply inherent demand in Winchester for some additional pre-K, which perhaps present day the MSBA does not support, we still have the opportunity to add that space if we feel we need to do it. And I think we really hit a home run on VO because as Charlie remembers, that was all literally shell space. You know, that with the footprint was there. So it was really cheap space that kind of opportunity might present itself. Thank you, Seamus. Yeah, no, absolutely, thank you. And then my, my other point is very similar, you know, if we're having five kindergarten sections, you know, is, is there any way to say, okay, rather than 22 classrooms, can we go to the 25 because we feel like we could have five sections at each grade level? Um, you know, they are pretty um, sed steadfast in terms of their enroll in terms of their um, in t their the, the enrollment they've given you, and you've had a back and forth already about that. So unless you can, and and I don't think we've ever seen a project reconsidered. I don't think the MSBA is much interested in reconsidering um, the uh, the approved enrollment. Um, after a project starts, I don't. I've never seen it happen. I'm not sure they, they won't hear it at all. No, so it gets hard to ask for extra classrooms. I mean, they they're going to say, do you ha you know you're asking for that? Your gee, I got my calculator out, and you're going to have 13 students in this classroom. We don't want to spend money on that, and I, it's hard to argue <laughs> argue that point. And they're very concerned about districts overbuilding. So I think Chris's point of finding opportunities to have expansion might be a safer route than trying to over ask and it gets there um in our experience it sort of gets them suspicious if you start to start just asking for the moon and i think the other issue is, is as chris mentioned is cost right so square footage equals dollars and if there's any concern at all about the uh the ultimate cost of the project the more we add the more we are the more we're asking for in terms of construction dollars so uh, it's all entirely all up all up to you. It's your school, uh, ultimately. It's your students, and and y you drive the discussion around this. We can only give guidance, but our my my intuition is we don't want to over ask. Um, so I was just going to say that I was a new VO parent in the district um, when the new when the old VO was knocked down and the rebuild started and I was there for the groundbreaking. Mm -hmm. um, so it's fascinating looking back and looking at the VO now, 
um, to see how the or all the planning that went into it and how the spaces have changed. Mr. Dixon has alluded to being able to build out the two the classrooms on the lower floor, and I remember when those were used just as storage space and helping teachers pull out storage stuff because the new classrooms, the new the the rooms were going to be built out into kindergarten rooms, I believe, at first, and then now they are pre-K. Um, and it's also been interesting, like with our media center, um, and how the concepts have, or the concept of how you use smart boards. I think Ms. Bergstrom alluded to that, um, and the technology that you can use to push the 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 uh, those boards around, <laughs> um, and just make it more useful and flexible. So I guess I have a, an, I, I appreciate. Um, having the flexible space for education. Um, and I, th I feel as if we heard that a lot from the Lynch community and being able to have that connection to the outdoors, to outdoors and also being able to have centrally located um, uh, uh, space for classrooms um, and for the kids to just be able to interact with each other. So. Um, I think it's been asked before, but I just wanted to go back to it, and I'm wondering um, if um, there has, if there will be some review with people out of the VO community. Um, I think Ms. Bergstrom might have alluded to this in previous meetings, um, just about uh, things gone right, things gone wrong, um, from that project, <laughs> and how that might influence this project moving forward. That's a process, I mean, right. that, yes, that's certainly something that could, could happen. It's a process question, um, but definitely. I mean, there could be a kind of, some sort of a working session with the uh, parents, absolutely. Do you see that more, you're, you're asking that more sort of from the design frame than the programming frame? Uh, yes, yeah, the d yeah probably I mean, a I'm design. Take, I, take, yeah. I took it that way, yeah, yeah. okay. Probably a design. Like so. people interacting with the space. Is that yeah. what you're talking about? Um, yes. So. And are you thinking more staff than parents? There was definitely a staff aspect, and then, but I think there is also a parent aspect. But I think this is probably further down the line, like with traffic flow and uh, right. stuff like that. So that's further down the line, I think. So, but hmm. we can. I can you want to go, Tom? Go yeah. First. Oh, yes. Mr. Hopcroft. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, first, we're just a, a couple things, just reading back what I think I heard to make sure I understand. Um, on the MSBA guidance, um, they're, they have sort of a minimum standard of, you know, we expect this many square feet or, or whatnot, um, that they don't, don't want us to go below. We can go above that. It just means they may not pay for it, right? Actually, no. It's actually sort of vice versa. Um, generally speaking, they are trying, they're sort of trying to establish what they think are, are reasonable maximums, with the exception of core, core academic at the top. Um, and they ask for justification if you exceed the numbers. They actually don't usually object to being below the numbers. Again, with the exception of core academic, where they view that as really key, and special education, because that um, generally goes through uh, Odessi review. And the view there is that they, they really are concerned if you're well low of their guidance there. But the rest of it, I mean, if you build a smaller gym, they don't object. If you build a smaller cafeteria, they don't object. If you build smaller administrative offices, they're delighted. Um, so it really is more, it's right. more a theory, it's, it's kind of a, it's a confusing, I'm giving you a confusing answer. It's, it's more a cap, however, they do allow exceeding the cap. All you have to do f to exceed the cap is justify it. But, but they, um, no, they're, 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 they're much less concerned about being below than above. Your answer, I think, was clearer than my question. So, uh, so thank you. <laughs> uh, my, my intent was um, if we wanted to do larger than what they had here. Then you need to tell them why. We can ask them for, for, yeah. for their approval. They yeah. may approve it. Um, if we still wanted to do something larger, is it not an option to do it, or is it we just have to pay for the delta? Well, you pay, you're going to you pay for a big delta anyway for a whole number of reasons. I mean, the MSBA's contribution is discounted in a lot of different ways. 
Um, so in terms of square footage, right? So they're not paying a one-to-one -one in terms of how much you build anyway. So um, it really is whether or not they allow you to build a bigger school than their guidelines um, allow. They may say, build it. It's all on your own dollar. Um, or I would anticipate the overage in classrooms, they'll accept that and also participate in it. Okay. That's maybe maybe preschool aside, but the like general classrooms, um, typically if you can justify it in your ed program, they'll say, okay, fine, and we'll participate in that. But if you're asking for, you know, a double the size of the gym, they could say, well, they, they actually have policy around that. But if you said, we want a, a bigger gym, and they could say, okay, fine, do it, but we're not participating in it. Because um, they're trying to be fair district to district. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's how they level that, is to say, if you really want it, sometimes they'll allow it, but then um, you, you're paying, and then it just becomes very complicated. They extract it, and then they extract the design fees, and then they extract a whole bunch of other stuff, too. So it, just, it gets complicated. But that's so, so can, it, can I just offer so, a quick yeah. anecdote that Mr. Nardone will remember vividly? The MSBA was explicit with us on Winchester High School that if we tore down the auditorium wing, we would not be rebuilding that part of the high school with an auditorium that big because the auditorium and the stage, in their opinion, was too big for Winchester, if you can imagine that. What's that? And the gym. And the gym. Yes, I forgot. Yes. So they, so there are limits to what they will consider. There are, there are, there are some red lines that they draw. But it sounds like if, if for instance, we thought we could make a case for, you know, eight pre-K rooms, but they just didn't agree, um, they're not going to walk away from the project. We could just try to fund the other room. I'm not saying we should do this, but, but. I. It, I it, it could convince them it should be part of the project. And right. And it's okay. They could okay. walk away that, from the that, project. Yeah. That, they, could that was, you, so they, they could tell you, you we're not allowing. You. We're not. We're, okay. You that, know, that was then, the question. Then you build yeah. the whole school on your own. Got it. Thing. Okay. It's sort of. It really so, is case so, by case. So it really is an approval process, not a funding process. Got it. It is an approval process. Okay. Um, uh, my next question was um, uh, just in the special ed. It looked to me like you were saying uh, in, in their guidance they had an extra classroom and in your uh, recommendation we're replacing it with we're just breaking it up into three breakout rooms so 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 what what they have is um, what they have is about 2,000 square feet in resource room and small group room and what we've ended up with is 1600 so a little bit below their guidance for those two categories um, they also allow four again quote unquote self-contained classrooms we're asking for three but then we're we're using the fourth one to um, do what I as I mentioned a pre-k um, space that it, to be developed, but around the idea of uh, a sensory room, the OTPT. Uh, an OTPT space for pre-K, et cetera. Good. So it kind of all levels in the end. In other words, we're only 100 below their, their guidance. Yeah. It's just we've sort of changed the categories a little bit. Yeah, no, I saw that it had netted out. I was just trying to figure out where it netted out, but that's, that's helpful. Yeah. I, I think so, that's we're, so we're ending up using the four the four um, 950s that they allow, we're just sort of changing some of the names around and we're generally using the uh, square footage allowed for resource and small group because we've added an, an extra OTPT room that they don't uh, allow for and we've added what we call a SPED staff collaboration center uh, that's right now another one, another generic term, but, but we have found that this space template doesn't support any administrative space for SPED. Okay. And we have yet to do a school where, where, where quite reasonably, um, SPED, SPED instructors say, so where do I hang my purse? I'm in the classroom yeah. all day. Where do I have a private phone conversation? Where do we have a team discussion? Am I doing it in the parking lot? And so it's a fair question, and the, the, the template doesn't help us with that at all. It's silent on it. So we sort of need to create a category for that. We don't know what that's going to be, but we're assuming it'll happen because it seems to happen on every school. Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll be quick because I realize we're getting near the end here. Um, uh, I, I love the multi-use flexible um, uh, approach that, that you've taken throughout here, and, and uh, both for uh, the better usability, but also for the cost effectiveness of that. 
So things like the learning zones in the hallways, I think are, you know, I, I know personally when I renovated my house, I was all about minimizing hallways. Um, they're not mm -hmm. super useful and multi-use is great if they can become learning areas. Uh, the, the platform between the stage and the gym, if that ends up happening, um, I think it's a great idea. My, my junior high school had that. Um, and I think it's, again, very flexible use of space to be configured in multiple ways, which is wonderful. Um, and uh, what was my point over here? Oh, and on the three teacher planning rooms, I, I was wondering about the three different floors, but also uh, even if you ended up in a two-story building, um, wondered if, if it still might make sense to have one of those be um, for the pre-K area, if, if they need some collaboration space. And, and maybe that probably the size isn't enough to get to Seamus' point about extra learning um, space, but, um, but I just throw that out as another thought or idea. But I like it. I just reiterate some, um, I agree with um, Mr. Nixon, or Mr. Um, Hopcroft that I really like the, um, the ideas presented on flexibility of space, particularly with the gym and the stage area. Um, I'm curious about the special education spaces, um, and this may be a question for um, our own staff as well as you, but um, I see that there's a specific special education um, program um, that's noted here for um, our spaces and what we're planning around. And I'm curious about the flexibility of those spaces as well and thinking about how we're using them and perhaps um, um, thinking about those not as self-contained classrooms, but also different kinds of flexibility with space there um, in case that's not the program that we have there always. Um, our needs may change in the district. We may not always have the spectrum program at Lynch. And I just want to make sure that as we're thinking about those spaces that, um, you know, if there's any way to think about flexible walls, flexible movement, um, to be able to adapt for different kinds of special education programming. And even as we think differently about special education moving forward in the district, we may come to a point where our programming is different than, the, than this kind of space would provide for. So I'd just like to throw out those kind of ideas that, um, like not just thinking about those kind of spaces in the static way we've always used them before, but maybe think about them creatively moving forward into the 21st century kind of education that we're providing. So um, I'm curious to know if any other districts that you've been working with are thinking about that kind of space differently and um, what kind of ideas you can bring to us for that. And that may be more than you can answer today, but just throwing it out there. I think, I think well, while Charlie ponders, can I just offer, I, I'll take the blame for, you know, recommending that we ha include that reference parenthetically. This was really just a way, since self-contained SPED is kind of from the MSBA template, right. we wanted to be sure that this was a way of, of being sure we were accounting for the space that we know we need for the, it could have easily said specialized learning center. Right. Um, and even, you know, because it could be a different SLC, but even years later, it, I think to your point, we may rethink actually what an, even an SLC is. This was really just a way to be sure we hadn't forgotten them, if right. you will. So I think we'll look for input from your staff on how they view, you know, these spaces and how best to, to, to develop them. I think one thing that's important, and you'll see ultimately in the plans, is all of these spaces need to be, e you know, evenly distributed through the building. So we're not going to gang three of them together with portable walls and say, oh, this could be one giant 6,000 square foot room or something because it, because DESE insists that they be distributed and it's appropriate that they be distributed. They serve different populations in different age groups. Um, and, uh, and so from that perspective, I don't think we'll do anything radically different. And, and, and we, we, do, we do, to a large degree, take guidance from the educators, right, in the district in terms of how to develop these spaces. Mr. Brady. Just one more quick thought, and forgive me if this is very obvious and something that you already have fully intended, but just as someone who's worked in a variety of schools and a variety of spaces, I would just implore that any space that students are going to be in, any space that adults are working in, if we can have windows that open, <laughs> I, I, I can't stress it enough, having worked in spaces with students with no windows, having had offices and, and had have having people right now 
in office spaces that have no windows, no windows that open. It, it's time and time again, it becomes an issue. It's a challenge. People are uncomfortable. I know it probably takes extra to do that, but if there's any way to do that, I would just implore you to do that because I think it makes a, a huge difference to people when they're stuck in a box somewhere. A they feel like they're in a closet somewhere and it, it's just... We will do our level best. There will be rooms in this building that do not have windows, but our hope is it's not, an, it's not ever an educational space. Hopefully it will be back of house, storage, these kind of rooms. And I would just say as my final comment um, on the media center, I like how the media center has been adapted here so that it's outside of some classrooms and so that they can see that the kids and the teachers can see and use that space. Um, and I would say that over at VO, uh, one thing that I've heard over the years with the media center is it's, uh, it's been, well, right now I think it's been, or it had been used as, uh, first it was used as a media center, then it's been as a maker space. Uh, I think we've had enrichment up there. Um, so I, I, sometimes I've heard, well, it could be turned into another classroom. So I just, I really like how this media center is uh, so usable and um, useful for different for the classes to be able to access so appreciate it I would be happy to make a motion if, yes. if we can in the interest of time though yes. because yep. Jay graced us with his presence but you're going back to the office tonight Did, can we ask Jay if he has any thoughts questions comments uh, just looking for direction from the school committee that's easy. I agree with what we did here. We've been through it quite a few times, and we're used to dealing with the MSBA afterwards and the push and shove that comes back. Most the high school is the biggest, where they just write out, you know, no auditorium and the stuff they did. And the gym, especially, was a huge fight with them. That's why we're stuck with the floor that we have there and some other stuff. They just wash their hands on us. So. Well, thank you for being here tonight. Um, the last comment I'll make is things like outdoor classrooms are not reflected here. So this is really just interior building gross and Lynch has some wonderful outdoor classroom, you know, teaching spaces and courtyards today. And I have every expectation, you know, the team will find and seize those opportunities as we move forward. Um, can, can I, before you make a motion, can yeah. I, can I just, uh, just two quick questions that came up just there. Um, one, one was on, um, <laughs> on the gym you know lynch used to be a, a, a middle or elementary school and so perhaps has a i don't know if it has a larger gym than than planned no so so we're good getting rid of that maybe and, okay uh and the other was on mr brady's point about windows you know i do think natural light is wonderful um opening them you know pros and cons of, of that but but it begged a question which is probably not a space question but just wanted to put it out there hvac but this place is air conditioned in the summer it will be conditioned air. To what degree we'll we'll have that discussion. Wow. You're not even elected, Charlie. You're not even elected official. And it's I'm not an elected official. Can I answer that more? Can yeah. I give you my two cents? I'd love it. Yeah. I believe we made a big mistake in 2010 and 2011 on VO. I feel like we, and I was a part of the school committee at the time, didn't show enough leadership on that issue. There was a lot of c concern about air conditioning the building. It was represented that other schools, you know, weren't air conditioned in other districts. Of course, Lincoln was. So this is a, this is an equity issue. Lincoln Elementary School is the only school in the district with its own cafeteria, gymnasium, auditorium, air conditioning. And we did air condition the administrative spaces. They're, you know, occupied during the summer. But it was a very, very difficult fall of 2013 and I mean difficult school committee meetings when we heard from parents and even some students about how unbearably hot and uncomfortable it was up on the third floor of that building. So we had to go back in and cut holes in VO and put in supplemental air exchanges and mushroom fans, et cetera. And all along, uh, Tap Bay's design team was saying, you know, the MSBA does reimburse for air conditioning. So I think that the genesis of the question just simply comes from one of wanting to be sustainable and making good decisions, um, not just in terms of energy costs, but energy consumption. 
and since we designed VO, we've got a fantastic climate action plan, and that is something we've recognized in the RFP and we want to try to embrace. But I have every expectation we're going to be providing some measure of air conditioning in this building because just as our thoughts long term about special education may change, as Ms. Bergstrom was saying, we may find we have an extended school year. We may find an opportunity to <laughs> occupy that building during the summer, and maybe it's a source of revenue, et cetera, et cetera. But on that note, with the understanding that we will go from two art rooms down to one, I'm happy to move that the school committee approve the Lynch Redevelopment Project proposed space summary as amended and to authorize the EFPBC to include in the PDP submission to the Massachusetts School Building Authority in January a net square footage of approximately 68,760 square feet. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And now I'm happy to move to adjourn. Thank you very much. Yes, we have a unanimous vote. And do we have a, we have a second? All in favor? Aye. 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 And we will return at 6 p.m. Well, well we, we, take, we take five. 6.15 6 p.m. <laughs> for the regularly scheduled meeting of the school committee. And thank you so much to Charlie and Chris and to Jay.